On a day like today, you don't have to look too far in Vancouver Island to see why people travel here from around the world. But tourism has suffered in the global economic downturn, and the provincial government has retooled its marketing plan as a result. Premier Christy Clark laid out BC's new tourism strategy today, giving up on the former goal of doubling tourism in the province in the next four years. The plan now is ambitious, but is more realistic. CTV's Aaron Glazier reports. From our world-famous wineries in the interior to our brilliant coastal surfing waters and snow-capped peaks, using these images to lure tourists is key to the province's new marketing campaign titled Gaining the Edge. And it's focused on leveraging our advantages. Especially in the face of a post-Olympic lull in tourists and a strong Canadian dollar. We're going to market and we're also going to focus on developing those longer term markets in China and India, which have these burgeoning middle classes, lots of people to spend money. Don't miss a moment. The plan calls for a 5% increase in tourism per year to the tune of $18 billion by 2016. Clark herself is planning to be the province's best salesperson during a trip to Asia in November, and Tourism Victoria is on board. We really highlighted the aspect of partnership, we are the focus on marketing um, and a commitment to this industry from the Premier, which is something that I think we wanted to hear and we heard, so I was pretty happy. Adventure tourism operators in the capital have seen it firsthand. Fewer tourists, but with Premier Clark's plan to focus on eco and outdoor tourism, the sell should be easy. The most important thing is going to be education. You know, showing people that this is a great place to come and visit and what you can do here. From whale watching to skiing Vancouver Island's best runs, Mount Washington should see an increase in snow seekers after a million dollar ad campaign hits Toronto bus shelters and subways this winter, touting BC as the number one ski destination in the country. As the advertising gets out there, what happens on the website? What happens on the click-throughs? How many calls do we get? So I think there are some very immediate ways that you can start to measure that. But setting foot in beautiful BC to spend money is easier said than done. And that is why getting approved destination status from China was crucial, where the largest middle class is waiting to book their tickets. Air access and, and the expense of what it's like to fly into Canada and indeed British Columbia and visa situations. And both of those are actually addressed um, in the province's strategy and, and we're happy. Losing out again in today's announcement was the Victoria International Airport with no money specifically allocated to building longer runways which are needed to bring in larger planes and more tourists. And if and when that money will come remains to be seen. There's not a whole lot of new money going into the plan. What we're doing is we are reprofiling, refocusing money on the key markets and the key products that we provide. The pictures say it all, but putting them in front of the right eyes is the focus of this new campaign. And only time will tell if any edge is gained in attracting more tourism dollars to British Columbia. And Aaron Glacier joins us now with more Aaron, disappointing news about the airport, but not really a surprise. Now, the, mm -hmm. the province wants us to stay home and enjoy staycations uh, here in British Columbia as well. Uh, and the Americans did something today that might make that easier. Tell us about that. They sure did. Starting soon, the United States will begin charging a 550 surcharge to all passengers arriving by air and by sea. If you're driving over the border in your car, you will not be affected. Uh, however, we used to get a free pass on this little surcharge no longer. 550 no more per head. Pass. Yeah. All right. Aaron, thank you. You're welcome. Aaron Glazier reporting.